All right. We'll have a few more join us, hopefully, but we will get started because it is our nine o'clock tea time and we cannot be late for our tea time. Good morning, everybody. Coach Eason here. Hope everybody is feeling great. We have another awesome guest instructor with us today, Coach Claudia, and she will be leading us in a very awesome yoga session. Now, yoga is very, very important with the game of golf. I would say most, if not all, professional golfers do some form of yoga in their daily lives. And yoga helps your flexibility and your balance which is extremely important to golf swing. And not only that, it's very good for your mental and emotional well-being. It calms you down and helps your breathing. So when you're out on the golf course, and this one thing like the best golfers do, like Tiger Woods, Jack Nicholas, and Annika Sormstan, when they get really excited, they can quickly calm themselves down for that next shot. Because when you're out there and you get really excited and your adrenaline skyrockets and you're really fired up, well, say you have a 100-yard shot in whatever club you normally hit 100 yards. If you have adrenaline, you're all extra excited. You might hit that golf ball 120 yards, and then you hit it over the green and the water, whatever, out of bounds. Or say you're really nervous and your breathing isn't right and your hands are shaking. This is where yoga can help as well. Nice, calm breaths, calm yourself, focus, give yourself some confidence for that big putt. So with all that said, I'm going to turn it over to Coach Claudia, and then she will take it from there, all right? Coach Claudia, they are all yours. Great. Well, good morning. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm going to apologize up front. I cannot see you. So um, if you have any questions, please use your voice and feel free to ask questions or if you want to make comments or have any concerns, just let me know. Um, just like Coach Ethan said, yoga is not just good for your physical well-being. We'll do a lot of strength and strengthening things, but it's also excellent for your emotional and mental well-being. So several times during our practice, we'll pause and we'll reconnect to our breath. And that allows you to just take five slow breaths and just find your way back to a little calmer state um, and get your focus on. So let's get started just standing up and you can just separate your feet a little bit and maybe start by just distributing your weight right to left, just kind of rock right and left here. And maybe get a little bend in your knees going, roll your shoulders a little, just kind of neck roll, whatever feels kind of good, stretch your hands out. And then try to plant your weight evenly between both your feet, um, really, Notice your feet. Notice what kind of, uh, what you're standing on, the texture of it, the, uh, hopefully you have your feet bare, um, the texture of your floor, maybe it's cold, like my, I'm in the basement, so it's kind of cold down here. And then uh, you can rock front to back on the balls and heels of your feet to, again, distribute your weight and try to find a nice center spot. And then you can lift up all your toes and spread them out and let them peel down just one at a time. So you're really gripping the earth underneath you and you have a solid connection. So you can kind of envision like a plant that has roots below the surface. So you can imagine if roots would grow under your feet, you'd be really stable and strong and it would help you to balance upright. And then from there, just sort of activate. So start to lift energy from the floor, activate lifting your kneecaps, you can tighten your thighs a little bit, feel those muscles. Start to lift energy up through your heart if you can just imagine getting taller and taller while staying rooted. And then take your shoulders up by your ears, give them a good squeeze and roll them back and down. Nice. Open and close your palms a few times, roll your wrists. And then you can reach your fingertips downward. And this will help you lower your shoulders away from your ears and give you some space to move your neck. Excellent. We'll take our right ear to the right shoulder. And you can feel a stretch already. 
If you'd like to experience more of a stretch, take your right hand and bring it all the way around and place it gently on your left ear. And then you can gently coax a bit more stretch. And if you want, you can take your palm and turn it toward your left thigh and then slowly float it up and just notice those sensations as you're stretching your neck and shoulder. And then go ahead and release all of that. And you can play with the other side. We always try to stay balanced by being right and left. So take left ear to left shoulder and your left arm all the way up and around. And you don't have to add the arms. If you feel a good enough stretch, just, you know, in your neck without the arms. And then turning your palm toward your thigh, float it up nice and slow. You might not want to go all the way out. It's okay. Just whatever feels like a good stretch. Everybody's body is a little bit different. And then let your arm float down and release your head. Great. And then maybe just take your chin to your chest and rock your chin right to left. Trying to keep those shoulders nice and low. Good, and then bring your head up right. Take your right arm way up to the sky, reach as high as you can, and then side stretch over and really feel that stretch. Try to keep your weight rooted in both feet so you're not rocking onto one foot. And then you'll really feel a nice stretch all the way up the right side of your body. And then all the way back up. And again, balancing on the second side, big reach up and side stretching over. Really nice. Good. Soften everything down again. Make sure you haven't locked out your knees. Just have a little bit of looseness in your body. Roll your shoulders a few times up and back and up and back and up and back. Good. Now try to let your shoulders settle low and take your right hand to your heart and your left hand to your belly. So here we're going to just connect to our breath for five breaths. I just want you to take a big inhale and inflate your belly into your hand and expand inward outward from the inside out into your hand space as well on the top. And then as you exhale, feel that all kind of soften down. So take a big inhale at your own pace, expand into both hands and let it go. And you can make an audible sigh if you want to, inhaling fully. And maybe sigh it out. Finish out five cycles there. And this is what we'll come back to periodically during the practice. Just allowing yourself to breathe and connect to that feeling of stability and strength. Good. Shake all that off. So if you're on a yoga mat, you can go up to the top of your mat. If you're not on a yoga mat, just make sure you have enough space to take a nice step back. So I'm going to just turn to the side so you can take a peek at what I'm doing. You're going to start with your just standing up like you normally would. And we're going to take our left foot back and start to come into a high lunge. So you may have to wiggle around until you feel stable. You maybe you need to spread your feet right to left a little bit to get more stable. Maybe you need to adjust your back foot. And then what you'd like to have is your right knee over your right ankle that's stacking your joints and gonna help you stay stable. And you can kind of squeeze your thighs toward the midline, pull your right hip back and your left hip forward get real stable here. And then see if you can play around with your arms. So once you feel balanced, see, imagine you're grabbing a big old beach ball and you're gonna float it all the way up to the sky and sort of present it upward. Stay strong here. And then go ahead and lift your arms all the way up, turn to your left and you're gonna drop your left heel down. So your back foot is parallel to the back of your mat, and your arms reach out. This is called warrior two. So maybe turn your palms open to the sky and get your shoulders down away from your ears. And then reach out through your fingertips in both directions and see how much space you can take up. Try to occupy as much space as possible. Feel really confident rooting down into both feet. 
Maybe look out over your right fingertips. Good, warrior two, and then rest your arms down and turn fully to the side. So now both feet are pointing straight ahead and you've got some like looseness in your joints. You don't wanna be all tight, right? And then grab your hip points, find where they are, and then notice where your ribs are. When we fold forward, we don't wanna fold at the ribs. We wanna fold at the hips. So you have a nice flat back. So find those hip points and then just fold forward, come about halfway down. And here I want you to imagine that you could set like a fancy teacup on your spine and it wouldn't spill. You may already begin to feel a stretch in the back of your thighs and hamstrings. And then go ahead and start to float all the way down, stretching into a wide leg forward fold. Yes. Let your head fall really heavy, the top of your head going down and the tip of your tail going up. Take a few stretches here, maybe bend the right knee and the left knee or shake your head a little bit. Then try to just relax, relax your muscles. Quiet your mind, see where it's gone. See if you can bring it back to your breath. Just notice your breath. Nice and patient here. And then walk your hands towards your right foot and we'll come into a low lunge. So you'll drop your left knee onto the floor and relax the top of your left foot. Again, your knee is stacked over your ankle. You can use your hands to start to lift yourself up. And then facing your right knee, you're gonna reach your arms out and roll your shoulders back and down. And then again, like you have a beach ball, lift it up. And then just let both arms fall wide open, all the way open. So you can kind of lift your heart space towards the sky. Maybe lift your nose. And if it feels all right, you can ease your hips forward in a more of a stretch. It just kind of depends how tight you are. Everybody's kind of screwed together differently, so you don't need to look a certain way as long as you feel a stretch. Yoga is very personal. And then you'll start to shift your weight onto your left knee so you can get that right leg a little longer. And we'll try to stretch the bottom of the right leg all the way up that hamstring. We call this monkey stretch. Some people call it like a half split stretch. You've probably done this a hundred times in gym class or wherever, whatever sport you play, you know, obviously golf, but anything else as well. It's a common stretch. Try to take slow, full breaths. Exhaling is always a good way to soften into a stretch. And then bring your weight onto your right foot and tuck your left knee, toes, and lift your left knee off the floor. Another good stretch. You might need to move your right foot a little wider so your feet are on like two separate railroad tracks. And then you can take your left hand on the floor and put your right hand on your right knee. And if you feel comfortable, you don't have to do this, obviously, nothing you have to do. You could turn your chest to the right and kind of twist a little bit. Just get some rotation in your spine. If you want, you can reach up with your right hand. Nice. And then go ahead and bring your hands to the floor. Push your hands into the floor so that you can lift that right foot and come all the way into a high plank or a push-up position. I know you know how to do this. So from a push-up, we're going to go into down dog. Bend your knees a little bit. Leave your hands and feet pretty much where they are. And just push into your hands to shift your weight toward the back. Pushing your bum toward the back. Pushing it toward your heels. And let your head fall in between your upper arms. And then if your hamstrings allow, you can start to straighten out your legs and drop your knees, or your heels, sorry. Downward dog. This is a great stretch for your shoulders, your hamstrings, like pretty much everything you need to stretch. And then bend your knees a little bit, look forward, and just walk your way forward until you can come to a forward fold. 
Maybe grab onto your elbows and let your head fall heavy. You can shake your head around a little bit if that feels nice. And then release your elbows, roll up one vertebrae at a time. Really take your time, get a good inhale so you don't feel dizzy. And come all the way back to the beginning. Go ahead and put your hand on your heart and your belly again. Notice how you feel. Maybe your heart's beating a little faster, or maybe you feel a little dizzy. Rote your feet into the ground. Calm your mind. Whatever you're thinking about, just kind of let that go and notice your breath. Big inhale five times. Big exhale. Relax your shoulders. Notice if you're clenching your jaw. See if you can relax your jaw. Relax your face. Ah. Nice job, guys. All right, let's play around with the other side. I'm gonna face the other way, but you'll just face the top of your mat again. And take your right foot back this time into a high crescent lunge again. So remember, this takes practice to get even your weight distributed. So think about how much weight is in your right foot and your left foot, how much weight is between the right and left side, try to get everything right down the middle. You can kick out through that back heel, Scoop your belly up to really engage your core and get a really strong base so you can wiggle around without falling. And then go ahead and reach up and grab that beach ball, lift it all the way to the sky. Make sure you didn't take your shoulders with you. Shoulders are soft. Relax your jaw and your face, breathe. And then reach all the way up and turn into that warrior two position. Remember, it's not the position that makes yoga. It's your mind, okay? So your body might not look the same as mine. Your body might not end up in the same position as mine, but as long as you're breathing and just relaxing into it, you're doing yoga, okay? Really nice. And then rest your arms down and turn fully to the side again. Here we'll turn our toes wider than our heels and bend your knees out over your third toe. This is called goddess pose. And then you'll take your arms up to the sky and bend them out like cactuses. So spread your fingers, or some people call it goal posts. So make sure your tailbone isn't floating way back and arching your spine. Try to get your tailbone low. Belly engaged, nice and strong. You should feel some work in your thighs. You can kind of move right to left and notice if you're favoring one side or the other, try to stay centered. You can lift your toes up or lift your heels up and just kind of play with your balance. See how that's going. Good, and then rest. Turn your feet forward. Grab those hip points and fold all the way down. Try to relax here and stretch your spine. Walk your hands towards your left foot and again, come down into that low lunge. Right knee down, left foot forward. Use your hands, guide yourself upright. Reach for that beach ball and float it over your head. And then just drop it. Open your heart toward the sky. Maybe lift your nose, stretch into it, breathe in and out. And then bringing your hands to the floor, help yourself shift your weight onto the right knee. Nice long left leg, stretching that hamstring. Maybe you can drape your body forward, maybe not. Maybe you need your knee really bent because you have tight tight hamstring, that's okay. Again, just modify this to make it fit your body. There's no perfect form. Shift your weight onto your left foot. Tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up. Low lunge, another great stretch. 
And then leaving your right hand on the floor, if you want to play with a twist, put your left hand on your left knee and rotate your spine to the left. Maybe reach up. Breathing. Reach back down. Bring your left foot back to meet the right. High plank. Good. And this time we'll just drop the knees and we'll go into child's pose just for a little break, okay? So you can either just sit right back on your heels or you can bring your knees wider than your heels and bring your toes to touch. And then you kind of wiggle your bum back toward your feet. Let your chest fall toward the ground. If your head doesn't make it to the floor, you can stack your fists, make a little pillow and rest your head on the pillow. If your head goes all the way down, that's cool too. So here I want you to imagine you have your hands on your belly and your chest, you don't. But you're gonna just try to feel that same experience of five slow breaths. So here you're putting your body into sort of a different position and maybe it's making you feel a little uncomfortable or anxious and that's okay. So we're gonna use our breath to calm it down. That's what you use it for. Big inhales, big exhales. Really try to just relax. Just let everything go, all your concerns and worries. Just breathe. Great. And from here, go ahead and lift yourself up into a table. Like your little puppy. And we'll go into cat pose. You drop your belly, lift your tail and heart, and kind of look forward, arching your spine. This is called cat. And then you'll do the reverse. Lift your shoulder blades up, tuck your tailbone under, and look between your legs. And that is cat. Great. So from here, I just want you to come up to standing for a minute. And we'll do just a little bit of balancing. So let's reconnect to our breath just to center ourselves. Hand on heart in the belly. Big breaths in and out. Maybe try closing your eyes. Really fill your belly with breath. Bring the inhales low into the abdomen. Exhaling out all the stale breath until you just feel empty. Super job. So we'll try a little balancing on one foot. This is always good fun, right? So we'll stand on the right foot and bring the left knee forward just so you're on the, tip, the toe. And then take that left leg out to the side. So you're making a little triangle with your leg. And then bring your hands to your heart center. Just relax your shoulders, really nice. So rooting into that right foot, like we did before, you're shifting all your weight onto that foot. See if you can take that kickstand up onto the ankle. And if that feels okay, you can bring it onto the calf. And if you still haven't fallen down, you can bring it up to the inner thigh. So wherever you end up, if you fall, that's okay. You just come right back to it and practice. Practice drawing energy up like you're rooting down, remember those roots of the plant, into the ground and then lifting energy up, up, up through the top of your head. Maybe you can reach your arms up and spread your fingers. Lovely. And just shut that all down, shake it off, let it go. It's just yoga. And then try the other side, standing on that left foot. Make a little kickstand and open out your knee. Bring your weight onto your left foot, nice and solid. Hands at the heart, or they could be down or on your hips or whatever feels comfortable. And then you can play around with removing your kickstand, just like you did when you learned to ride a bike. If you're able to get your foot onto your calf or ankle, you can kind of push the foot into the leg and the leg into the foot to create a nice bond. 
and maybe float your arms up and imagine you're a tree in the forest and you're trying to reach up toward the sun, get through the canopy of the other trees and get yourself some light and heat. Great job, and then you'll just shut it down, back to the midline, root your feet into the floor, get solid, relax your shoulders, shake it off. Really good. All right, I want to get you a couple of stretches before we run out of time. So we're going to go all the way down to the ground and have a seat. Cross your ankles. Let's start with the right ankle in front of the left. And relax your shoulders. Then take your right arm all the way across to your left knee and your left hand all the way across to your right knee. So you create two X's. I call this the double X stretch. So you might already start to feel this in your shoulders. You feel your shoulder blades separating and you're stretching the back and shoulders. And then you can tuck your chin toward your chest and kind of round your back. And you'll feel a really nice stretch in your shoulders, okay? So if we had more time, we'd linger a little longer, but just for time's sake, we'll go ahead and lift your head and bring those elbows up, bringing the cross up, up, up over your head, and then reach all the way to the sky. Soften your shoulders down, take a big inhale, and as you exhale, you're going to turn to the right, bring your left hand to your right knee and your right hand behind you. Take an inhale and lift your spine as long as you can get it. And then start to turn gently to your right. So sometimes we just turn our shoulders. Try to turn your belly, your ribs, your shoulders, your neck, your gaze, everything to the back. And just twist out that spine, helping with agility and mobility. And then take one more big inhale, and as you exhale, just completely loosen up and up. And then rock back and swap out your shins. So now the left is in front. And then we'll take the left hand across first and the right hand over the top. So we've reversed it. Good. And then same thing, you can tuck your chin to your chest, stretch between the shoulder blades, round your back, breathe into it. Relax your jaw. Take a few slow breaths. And then go ahead and lift your head, float your elbows up, reach all the way to the sky. And slowly turn to your left. Notice how that feels in your back. See if you can distribute the twist evenly from your tailbone all the way to the top of your head so it's not just in one spot. And then totally unwind. Lovely. Bring your legs out in front of you. And just shake them off a little bit. Now you may need to have your knees bent a little bit to be comfortable here. That's okay. And we're going to fold forward. So again, remember, we instead of folding at your ribs, I want you to think about folding at your hips. Just like a, like a door would shut this way. So you're not trying to go forward this way, but nice and flat, flat back. I'll turn to the side so you can see. And just come forward any amount. It doesn't have to be far. And you'll start to feel a stretch in your hamstrings. If your hamstrings are real tight, bend your knees. And then you're just going to keep working to fold forward. Take really big inhales. And when you exhale, see if that can kind of just ooze you forward. Just nice and softening you downward. Go for five breaths here. And imagine you're breathing into your back body. Spreading out your back, your ribs. Relax your toes and your fingers. Relax the skin right between your eyebrows. Breathe slow and full. Good. And then go ahead and lift your heart up. And bend your knees, lay on your back with your knees bent. 
And bring both knees to your chest. And then put your hands on your knees and make a big circle with your knees. You just roll right to left a little bit. You'll feel a little massage on your back. Go both ways. Good, and then just hug your left knee in and type your right foot and press it all the way away from you, pushing out through your right heel so your left knee is hugged in and your right leg is long. And you can just let that right leg fall onto the earth. Then we're gonna roll into a twist. So you're gonna take your right hand to your left knee and your left arm wide like a wing. And you'll roll to the right, rolling onto your right hip. And just give your spine a teeny little twist. You don't have to go very far to feel it. If you want, you can take your head and look to your left hand. Breathe here. Relax. And then come back through the center. Bring both feet back to the floor again. Lift your bum up and line your hips up with your shoulders again so you're square. And then do the other side. Have the right knee in and the left leg goes long. Stretch here. Relax your shoulders. And then we'll roll onto the left side. So left hand on the right knee, right arm out like a wing, and roll on over. Ah, feel that nice twist. Back to your back. Both feet back on the floor. Square yourself off so you're just nice and flat on the ground. And then take your feet way down to the outer corners of your mat. So your legs are kind of open V. Stretched out, toes wider than the heels. Turn your palms open to the sky and then bring your arms to a low V. And try to get your shoulders on the ground. Just close your eyes for a minute and notice every spot in your body that's connected to the earth. Maybe your heels, your calves, maybe your thighs and your bum, your rib cage, your shoulders, the backs of your palms, the back of your head. Open and shut your jaw a few times. And then just relax your face and take five slow, full breaths and final Shavasana. All the work is done. Big breaths in and out of the body. Nowhere to go, nothing to do, just breathe. I'd love to just leave you here. Hopefully you feel really relaxed and calm. But it's time to go. So we'll go ahead and bring our feet back to the floor. Roll onto your side and lift yourself up to a seat. Cross your ankles again and rest your hands on your knees. So this gesture of turning your palms down is calming and relaxing, connects you to the earth again. Take a big breath in, push it out, make a big sigh, and then bring your hands to your heart center. Thank you so much for practicing yoga with me. You've done a wonderful job. I hope you feel better than when you started. I hope you feel calm and a little stretched and loose. I wish you well. Namaste. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. Please give a round of applause in your camera for Coach Claudia, a professional yoga instructor who volunteered her time to be with us this day. Thank you so much, Coach Claudia. We greatly appreciate it. Everybody have a great week. Study hard. We'll see you next Saturday, okay? Thank you, Coach Thank Claudia. you. Bye-bye.
Bye. Bye, everybody.